Party of California, as I say all the time, on the record, in print, and on radio, and on TV, is the last vestige of any real white people. You thought that the dead Americans were just like the Nazis. However, you had nothing but praise for the 9-11 hijackers. You called them courageous, even gallant. Mm -hmm. Gallant? Mm -hmm. What would it take to make you bomb this country again? I can't completely say no. I would never, ever rise up in opposition in, in a very militant and serious way. I can't say I wouldn't. That's just a little uh, from the couple of radical college professors who have been educating America's young folks in recent years. They seem to suggest that the right is not worth listening to. The 9-11 hijackers are worthy of praise, and Bill Ayers, a domestic terrorist and former University of Illinois professor, went so far as to say he couldn't rule out bombing this country again. Now, some of these men actually taught at public universities. Their salaries funded by the taxpayers. Just a few minutes ago, Trace Gallagher showed us some very questionable lessons from inside the classroom. So how did this all come to pass? And what does it mean about our country? Dinesh D'Souza is the creator of the hit film America, which is now out on DVD. Dinesh, good to see you. Here's, you tell me whether there is a difference between folks like Ayers and Churchill, who hate America. I mean, they, they don't believe that this is a country that's done any good in the world. And those who we listen to who want people to stomp on, you know, a, a piece of paper that has Jesus written on it, who want to tell the class that Republicans are stupid, that they are racist, that they are lazy, that they are uh, losers. Uh, the people who want to rip on Republicans as opposed to rip on America. Are these two different strains of professors we're looking at? Uh, I think, Megan, we're looking at a, a continuum of um, uh, leftism. Uh, a leftism that's very different than it was in the 1960s. Uh, in the 1960s, many of these people thought of themselves as, as revolutionaries of one sort or the other. They were kind of hoping that out of the ashes of the Vietnam War would come some massive social transformation. Some of them, like Bill Ayers, tried to bomb things. Um, um, Ward Churchill was doing military training for the Black Panthers and other radical groups. Now, all of that ended in despair and ended, of course, with Reagan uh, being elected in 1980. The 60s, in a sense, disintegrated. So a lot of the radicals went into a huddle, and they said to themselves, how do we, how do we revive? How do we come back? Uh, we're not going to get the revolution we had hoped for. And they realized, well, the way to come back is to actually penetrate the very institutions that they were once protesting. So at one time, these are guys who were standing outside the president's office and the dean's office and shouting and kicking over his waste paper basket. And now those same guys have become deans. Uh, and they've become college presidents or distinguished professors. Um, and even though in the 60s they talked about free speech, you might remember the Berkeley free speech movement of the 60s, none of them really believe in free speech for people who disagree with them. Well, like that so one they wanted to use the weapon down of the free speech sign. so that they could speak, but the moment that they got into these institutions, they became extremely intolerant of opinions that disagreed with theirs. Yeah, like that one woman, the professor we saw tearing down the, the, the student, uh, the young woman who was carrying that pro-life sign. It's like only the professor's message counted, not, not anybody else's. But, but here's my question for you. How do you, how, why and how do we have so many, and we're not talking about left. That's, there's a lot of people who are liberal in the country. We're talking about far left, like Ward and Bill Ayers, and then sort of a more sort of radical left, if you, if you will. The folks who are, who are just angry, right? They're just angry, like going out there saying Republicans are all racist. I know a lot of liberals, they don't talk like that. They disagree, but they're not out there saying you need to hate the other side. So the question is, how do these people get in institutions like Princeton, Columbia, NYU, you name it. These are storied institutions. Absolutely. Megan, when, when I was a student a couple of decades ago, I would say that there were two groups of liberals who were on the Dartmouth campus. Uh, there was a, a group of old line liberals, and these were classical liberals. They believed in economic redistribution, but they also liked America. Uh, this was the mainstream um, Democrats, if you will, and they were in charge. But there was an up and coming group of angrier, uh, more, more polemical, less tolerant. These were the 60s activists who were pushing 
pushing against the establishment. And now when I speak on campus, I notice that that former group, the old line liberals, uh, have gone away. They've retired, they've moved on, and this younger, more radical group has now become the mainstream and are using their power, the power to confer tenure, the power, remember, the professor is in a position of great power vis-a-vis -vis the student who's sitting, uh, who's dependent on the professor for a grade, so they are able to dictatorially use this power to promote their own ideology, mm -hmm. and they're very open about doing it. That's the rub, because it's one thing to have these views, but it's another to be in a position of authority over young, impressionable people. Now, we're going to have a guest coming up shortly after you who's going to say this is not true, that this indoctrination thing is a myth, that most of these guys are 60s radicals and they're moving out. You know, folks like Ayers who are retiring, Churchill got fired, Bernadine Dorn, who was on the FBI's most wanted list. Bill Ayers said lots of great people were on that list. Uh, she's no longer at Northwestern because she retired. So this, they're moving out is what he's going to say. And then he's going to say the professors may be liberal, but the students are liberal too. So they're really not doing any damage. Uh, well, first of all, the thing to realize is that guys like Ayers, even if they don't have an official position on the campus, are now beginning, they have moved out. They've moved out of the universities now into the high schools and into the elementary schools. Uh, Ayers is one of the most influential people in the so-called campus reform movements in the country. And by the way, this is a guy who went down to Venezuela. This is the Venezuela of the dictator Hugo Chavez, and then uh, openly said that this Venezuelan dictatorial socialist system of indoctrination is exactly the one that was his model for the United States. So here are parents, here are alumni who are funding these colleges. They're innocently sending their 18-year-olds off to college or in some cases off to prep schools. They're entrusting these faculty uh, with their children and they don't realize that they're actually subsidizing the promulgation of values which undermines everything that they believe, the patriotism, the social conservatism, the Christianity that they have taught their children from the time that they were young these are being actively subverted by this new generation of campus radicals. When you see these kids like the, the, the protesters of the pro-life signs who recorded what happened to them with the one professor or the kid who, who recorded uh, Derry Srago, the University of Southern California, the guy, she, the, the kid videotaped him, he was, videotaped him, he was the one who was recall, calling Republicans losers and stupid and racist. It takes a lot of guts to take out a camera and surreptitiously videotape your professor because your grade is dependent upon this person. There is a built-in mechanism to make you want to be submissive, if you will, you know, to, to, to not upset the apple cart. You can challenge him in class, but if it, if it goes beyond the pale to the point where that guy was, it's very hard for these students to do much about it. You have to remember that the, um, the liberal ideologue who's on the campus is, in a sense, unthreatened by anybody. Uh, they don't care about the administration because they have tenure. Uh, they don't care about parents. In fact, one a prominent philosopher, Richard Rorty, basically said to the students, my job uh, is to take your parents' values and undermine them systematically. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I consider your parents to be radical, uh, right-wing fundamentalists, and it's my mission uh, to undo what the damage that they've already done to your souls. So these are how professors talk. They just feel unaccountable to legislatures, unaccountable to alumni, unaccountable to parents. That's like what Churchill told me when he said, you know, he was writing that the 9-11 victims were little Eichmanns and, and basically deserved it, the ones in the World Trade Center. And he said, everyone had read my book. Everyone had read my piece. It was fine on campus. I wasn't persona non grata until the national media made this into an issue. But let me ask you this. Does it expand in your view, because you mentioned to the lower level, the high schools and so on, because one of the th people we're going to talk to today is somebody who's looked at the public schools and the unions that don't allow teachers to get fired, no matter how radical, no matter how bad, no matter what they do. How, how big a thread is that in this bigger problem, or is that just a separate issue, the, the unionization and the union's power in schools and public schools? Well, anything that makes a, a teacher uh, unresponsive, unaccountable, uh, in a sense, lets them run amok. And I believe long term. I mean, in the short term, uh, you can do an expose and I can go uh, and do hit and run lectures on campus and try to provide a small counter or we can show our film as we're doing uh, as a screening on campus. But I think long term, you have to create uh, new institutions using new technology uh, that are able to uh, undermine the monopoly that these leftist ideologues have over over higher and now increasingly over elementary and secondary education. Wow. It's, uh, there's the examples when we started to actually look into this were 
There were, there were many of them. We only chose, you know, the best few. Not to mention this charmer, Stephanie Wolf, down at West Liberty University in West Virginia, who said she banned her students from citing Fox News because she finds it cringeworthy and she doesn't want to be subjected to, quote, this biased news station. Well, you're in the minority <laughs> on that, Stephanie. Dinesh, good to see you. Megan, a pleasure. It, it's really incredible, isn't it? Well, Stephanie doesn't want to be subjected. Okay. Good luck with that.